What's going on everybody, Kalipas Tech here coming back at you with another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you some beginner tips and tricks for the Motorola Moto G Power 5G to help you get more used to using it. Now as always, if you do end up wanting to learn more about this phone, be sure to check out the description where I am linking to several other videos about it as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But with that being said, let's get into it. So to start off, I want to go over the sound menu. Now you can technically get to this from the settings, but the easiest and fastest way to get to your sound settings is by pressing either volume key, so like this. From here, hit these dots. And first of all, this is going to show you all your system volumes. So media volume, like if you're watching a video, listening to music, stuff like that. Call volume, so your earpiece when you're on a call. Ring volume, pretty self-explanatory. Notification volume, keep in mind this does include text messages. And then finally, alarm volume. From here, you can either hit done, and this of course is going to take you back to the home screen, or you can go to settings, and this takes you to the full sound menu. So up top here, we got all the volumes we just went over. Under this, we got do not disturb, which you can technically turn it on from here, but an easier, faster way to do it is wherever you are in the phone. Swipe down from the top, and do not disturb is right here. Then from here, we got a feature called multi-volume. This is essentially going to allow you to change the volume for multiple different apps. So for example, maybe you're on Spotify and you like to have the volume up, but then maybe you're playing a game and you like to have the volume down. This is going to allow you to set that up so you don't have to change it every time you open the app. Then if we go back from here, you can change the ringtone. So we got the default here and a few different presets too. And you can also add your own by hitting add ringtone. You can also change your notification and alarm sounds, so pretty simple. Basically the same kind of thing. Vibration and haptics, so if we go here, we got a few different options here. Then at the bottom, we got a few system sounds. Dial pad tones, screen locking sound, charging sounds and vibration, and power on sounds. These are all going to be on by default, but you can also turn on touch sounds. And if you want, you can have an icon show when you're in vibrate mode. So as you can see, the sound menu definitely has a lot to play around with, but those are some of the more essential features. The next thing I'm going to show you is an easy way to manage your notifications. So as you start to download more and more apps, by default, most of them are going to send you some sort of notification. And while this can sometimes be useful, there are always going to be those apps that are just going to send you constant useless notifications. So I'm going to show you how to turn those off. So what you're going to do is go to settings. To do this, swipe down twice from the top. So one, two, then from here, go to the gear icon right here. From this menu, go to notifications, so right here, then from here, go to app settings. From here, by default, it will show most recent, but if you hit this drop down, go to all apps, now it's going to show everything. So here you can turn notifications on or off for whatever you want. So for example, I'm going to turn notifications off for Android Auto, and I'll turn them on for Amazon, so you get the picture. You can basically toggle everything on and off from here, so it definitely makes managing notifications real easy. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to change your wallpaper. To do this, real simple, go to settings, then from here, go to wallpaper, and from here we got a few different options. You can choose from your own photos, stylized, dynamic, and then curated images which are pretty much just stock images. So when you select one, go to change wallpaper. For this I'm going to do on device wallpaper, so it's going to give you a preview of your home screen and your lock screen. Hit this icon right here. And now you can change it for your home screen, lock screen, or both, and that's pretty much it. Now that was easy enough, but I'm going to show you a quicker way to change your wallpaper and customize some other things on your home screen. So to do this, all you really have to do is press and hold your finger on a blank spot on your home screen, so like this, and this is going to show up. From here, you can personalize, which is basically some theme customizations you can make. You can also change your wallpaper. This is where we were just at. You can also add and remove widgets and customize some other home screen settings. So definitely a nice convenient menu. But I'm going to show you one more time in case you missed it. So again, press and hold your finger on a blank spot on your home screen. And it has to be a blank spot. Don't hit an app or a widget. If you do that, it's going to do this, which is not exactly what we want. So again, blank spot, press and hold. And there we go. Now I'm going to show you how to edit your quick menu. Now in case you don't know what it is, to get to your quick menu, swipe down twice from the top. So one, two, this is the quick menu, so just like it sounds, it basically just gives you quick access to a bunch of different features. But there are a lot of things on here that you're probably never going to use, so if you ever do want to customize it, all you have to do is hit this pencil icon. From here, at the top, it's going to show you everything you have in the menu, and below this line right here, it's going to show everything you can add. So to remove something, press and hold on the icon. Drag it to the other side. That's pretty much it. So now that has been removed. But if you want to add something, basically same thing. So press and hold. Drag it up. And there we go. So I'm going to do a few more. So there we go. And when you're done, simply hit the back button. 
and the changes automatically save. And then if you ever want to reset it, hit the pencil icon one more time. Hit these dots up here. Hit reset. And it's going to go back to the default. Now I'm going to show you how to change your screen lock. Now by default with this phone, it will be a pin. So as you can see right there. And I do also use the fingerprint scanner. So I'm going to show you how to set this up and change some other options. To do this, what you're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to security and privacy. So right here. Then from here, go to device lock. And to change your screen lock, go here. Put in your current pin. And in this menu, you can choose between none, swipe, pattern, pin, or password. None and swipe are basically no security. Pattern you can kind of see here. More of a classic Android thing, not really that secure, but at the same time if you want something but really not that much, it does work. Pin is pretty much the standard. And then password is really high security, so if for whatever reason you want that, it is always an option. In addition to this, if we go back to the main security menu, from here, you can also go to fingerprint, Enter your pin one more time, and you can set up the fingerprint scanner. Keep in mind, with this, you can add multiple fingerprints. And then if we go back one more time, once again in the main security menu, under device lock, if you go to face and lock, again enter your current pin or password or whatever you have. And here you can set up face and lock as well. Now I'm going to show you how to change your system navigation. Now by default, as you can see down here, we got the typical three buttons you usually see with an Android phone, but we do have a couple different options here. So to change this, what you're going to do is go to settings. From here, go to gestures, so right here. And then from here, go to system navigation. So again, by default, this phone does have three button navigation, which usually is gonna work for most people. From here, we can go to settings. And as you can see by default, holding the home button is gonna open the assistant, so pretty cool. But you can also turn this off if you want. Then if we go back, you can also change it to gesture navigation. So we're gonna hit gesture navigation. And as you can see, instead of buttons, we're going to get one line here, so a bit more minimalistic. Now in case you've never used this kind of navigation, I'm going to show you how it works. So to go home, swipe up. To go to your recent apps, drag your finger about halfway up, or a quarter way. So one more time, like this. And there we go. And to go back, swipe from the side. So pretty simple, but regardless, if you haven't already, I definitely recommend giving it a try. Now I'm going to show you how to change your screen time out time. To do this, go to settings. From here, go to display. And as you can see, screen timeout is right here. So as you can see, I have mine set to 30 minutes, really just for this video. I feel like most normal people in really any kind of situation are not gonna want it this long. But at the same time, if you want to, you always can. But keep in mind the drawback here, of course, is that it definitely does drain your battery quite a bit. And if you accidentally bump your phone and make the screen turn on, this can be a problem. But instead, if you're in a situation where maybe you're reading a lot and you don't want your phone to fall asleep, instead of having a super long screen timeout time, what you can do is go back to the main display menu. So hit back. And again, we are in the main display menu right now. And from here, scroll down to where it says attentive display. So right here. And essentially with this feature on, it's basically gonna use the front facing camera to detect your face. And as long as you're looking at the phone, the screen is gonna stay on. So if you're doing something like, again, reading for example, it's gonna keep the screen on so you don't have to have a super long screen timeout time. And this is definitely a cool feature because honestly, not every phone has this. So if you are doing lots of web browsing or reading or something like that, definitely keep this in mind. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to turn on dark mode, and this is actually in the same menu, so again, in case you missed it, basically go to settings, from here go to display, and dark theme is right here under appearance, so if you toggle this on, as you can see we are now in dark mode, definitely a lot easier on your eyes at night, and just kind of a cool aesthetic, so either way it is a nice feature to have. In addition to this, if you tap here, you can also schedule it. So you can have it turn on from sunset to sunrise or a custom time. And another thing I do want to point out here is that if you want quick access to dark mode, what you can also do is go to your quick menu. So again, swipe down twice from the top. So one, two, from here, it's not going to be on this menu by default, but if you go to the pencil icon, dark mode is somewhere down here. So right here, drag and drop. And now it is in the menu. So if we go back, it's going to be right here. So now if you want to, you can turn it on and off real quickly. So as you can see, we are now in dark mode. And now we're not. And finally, the last thing I'm going to show you here is how to take a screenshot with the Motorola Moto G Power 5G. Now there are a few ways to do this. The first one is pretty much the simple, easy way that works with basically any phone. What you're going to do is press the power key and the volume down key at the same time. And keep in mind, you don't have to hold these buttons, just make sure you press them at the same time. 
So like this, and there we go. You can share it, edit it, whatever you want. The other thing you can do in this really only works if you're on an app, so you can't do this with like your home screen, for example. But what you can do is go to your app, go to recent apps, and there's a screenshot button right here. I don't really get the point of this. It's not really easier than pressing the buttons or anything, but if you ever do see this button here and you wanna take a screenshot, I guess it does work. And then finally, the last way to do it is actually on by default. So keep in mind, you don't actually have to do anything special in the settings to activate this, but it's called three finger screenshot. Basically what you're gonna do is put three fingers on the screen. So like this, hold it for a second, and there we go. So real simple there. But this concludes my beginner's guide for the Motorola Moto G Power 5G. Again, if you want to learn more about this phone, definitely check out the description, where I am linking to several other videos about it, as well as some information about pricing, availability, and some of my favorite smartphone accessories. But that's it for this video. If you enjoyed it and found it useful, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow Kalipas Tech on Twitter and Instagram. And as always, I will see you in the next video.